Greetings again, everyone. Uh, if you like BMWs, for me, this is the most iconic BMW ever. It's the BMW M1, but the racing version, the Group 5 racing version. This model is made by Kyosho. It came in a 3 set, and the other two models, which I reviewed, are these two guys here. But if you want to pause and track those down, these are the only color liveries they came in. Uh, these are from 2012, so 10 years old. The other two models had pretty good paint finishes. Perfect, actually, so I'm hoping the same is in the case for this one, since it came from the same uh, set. But the typical Kyosha blister packs, it's got this protective blister screwed onto that face, and it usually has an info card, uh, but unfortunately it's all in Japanese. This car has a really long, convoluted history. Um, it's a late 70s car, of course. This is the first purpose-built race car by the M Group of BMW. Uh, M Motorsports, you know, was new back then, so BMW never made a mid-engined rear uh, vehicle, so they asked for the engineering help of Lamborghini, which obviously has experience making rear-engined vehicles or mid-rear-engined vehicles. But Lamborghini was in such financial troubles that uh, the project was years behind schedule, like two years behind schedule. And so all the potential customers were scared to buy this thing. Uh, Lamborghinis were never known for reliability back then. Uh, but the designer of the exterior of this, Giorgetto Giugiaro, his company Atel Design, he offered to make these cars for BMW because uh, he knew Lamborghini wasn't going to be able to. You know, if the Lamborghini was going to go bankrupt, they had more important things to do than to make a BMW. So Giorgetto, you know, being a proud designer, he decided to make these 400 plus vehicles for BMW. Alright, so that's the convoluted history. But uh, the scared customer base, you know, they didn't know what was going on between Lamborghini. So by the time that these things were being able to be made, uh, the customers were scared. So BMW had some really smart marketing where they created a race series just for this car. And they tied it with the Formula One season. So at Formula One races, they had a separate race of these things. And a lot of the F1 drivers like Nelson Piquet were driving these cars and the Formula One cars on the same day. So, you know, all the customers would see F1 drivers driving this car, and so they ended up ultimately selling 457 of these uh, vehicles, which would include the race cars themselves. So, they managed to do very well. Okay, so looking at this paint, it's, uh, I think, just as good as the other two models. So, um, I'm lucky there, because it's 10 years old. Now let's look into the details. Unfortunately, it was screwed to the base so tight that the uh, tires have flatted out. Oh, maybe? Well, I don't know. It looks like it's flat there, right? But that's actually realistic looking. I mean, real wheels do flat out, real tires, because of the weight of the car. So this one has the uh, mesh wheels, and uh, unfortunately they're not gold in the middle, but uh, it's okay. Uh, it's got the center knockoff hex there. I think there's air passing between those spokes. Yeah, you can see the light. So, man, Kyosho really does a good job with their wheels. I mean, most mesh wheels, if you've collected 164s, are blanked off because it's hard to pull the, m the mold through such thin plastic, but somehow Kyosho's pulled it off. It's crazy. Look at that on the backside, you know, the light shining through. Alright, well anyways, the tires look good too. Um, I think the rear tire is taller than the front tire, so there's separate molds for that. The riding stance is fantastic. It's lowered quite a bit, maybe even too low, which also means it's so much drag here. This thing is not going to roll, but uh, I, like, I like the stance lowered more than... I don't really like rolling models. Alright, so the graphics here are tampos. This is not like some decal. It's actually red paint, blue paints. The mirrors look nice because they're separate castings, probably plastic. So the good detail there. Uh, I can't recall what this is. It's not on the photograph. I have a suspicion maybe this casting is the road vehicle. And then they just made an extra wing and stuff. 
but it, it's probably a fuel filler if I had to guess. Oh, wait a second. It's weird. Just gonna go back. This is Nelson Piquet's car. No black circle. This is a different one, and it does have the black circle. So, maybe this is a, a street legal version. This, and this is a straight up race car because we got PK's thing on it. So, that would be the only explanation I can think of there. The windows, you know, they have black molded uh, details for the window molding. The door handle does have a ridge it's sticking out. And I think there's a key thing there. Yeah, the black uh, paint in these vents is all right. Going to the, well, there's a marker here, just, uh, oh, there's a bump there for the marker as well. And then uh, the white's covering up the, the creases quite well, so that's good. These little round brake ducts are actually deep. There's a ridging here. Sounds like plastic, probably part of the base. That could be plastic as well. These are actually clear lenses. You know, they're so small, but Kyosha did it right, you know? They're not just orange and silver paint. There's clear plastic in, in front of it, so very nice. The kidney grill, though, there's no texture or anything like that, which is weird. I mean, if they're going to put a texture here and here, why wouldn't they put it there? Um, I mean, even if this is metal, they could have casted in some ribs there. It's a bit strange. Well, anyways, the round looks okay. Uh, these vents, oh, really nice. There's black paint in here. These are such shallow vents. I would have guessed they would have skipped that, but uh, no, it's nice. And also, I think there's black paint in this vent. No, no, never mind. It's just a photo booth reflection. It's an illusion, I think. Yeah, that's just the blue. And that's just the white there. We have some bumps for the wiper fluid. Raised uh, wiper blade. And uh, just a blank thing here which is kind of strange you would think they would put like when the first photograph says BMW group classic and they obviously I guess they would put they didn't put the racers name because they would have to get licensing for that all right uh, these are actually depressions and then they're painted black louvers I think that's plastic it sounds like plastic and there actually is a air passing under it. You can see some light shining through. The rear wing is uh, not perfectly flat, but mm, eh, maybe it is flat. Anyways, it's pushed, in, pushed into these little uh, crevices there in the back. It's quite a crazy, dramatic wing. Mm, looks like the photograph, though. Sorry, I lost focus. There we go. Alright, the two roundels look good. It says M1. The motorsport stripes look all right the rear lenses look nice nice and thick and good separation of the colors no license plate on a race car makes sense some black paint for this uh, bumper molding and then we have a three-dimensional exhaust tip seems to be a separate piece maybe or possibly no it is a separate piece well that's interesting to see there's a giant cavity up there and then uh, some molded details probably of the differential and stuff so it is press fit together, which is also kind of weird. I would have guessed from 2012 this would have had a screwed together base, but no. But luckily there's no quality problems that I want to deal with, so uh, I lucked out. Nice to know what scale, what it is, and who made it. We just don't know when it was made, unless you have the original packaging. It's running racing slicks, which makes sense, and the staggered sizes make sense as well. Um, hmm. You get the black molded details here. It's hard to see it's such shallow windows, but maybe, sorry, if I cast some light from this side. Hmm, there's the racing seat, the passenger side. Oh, there is a seat there. Interesting. The other two race cars from this collection have gutted interiors. So that's interesting. Maybe this is just the road, road casting interior. In, Kyosha thought no one would notice. Mm, steering wheel is pretty thin. But then again, that driver's seat does have harness holes. Oh, but then again, maybe the real car, the road car did as well. But wait a second. Man, it's hard to tell. Looks like uh, for a second I thought the seats were different. No, they're identical seats. 
All right, well, all in all, it's pretty good. It actually looks perfect. Uh, wait, maybe there's a little paint rash there. Uh, I don't know, but it's nice. I'm happy I have this thing. So I do have the Kyosho Road Going version, which is also press fit together, but you'll notice the tires are totally different in width, and they have a tread. And then the wheels are the old equalizer kind of style wheels, which I kind of prefer these more. And there's uh, actually black paint there in the center cap. Uh, these mirrors, though, are casted in metal, so it has it's a totally different mold. But the seats, yeah, those are totally different. You can see some different cushioning. And let me just see. No, they're definitely not racing seats. They have normal headrests. Okay, so it is a totally different mold Kyosho made for this racing version. Let's uh, put this guy up here. This is also another Kyosho, but it's the LMP race car. It's called the V12 LMR. So first motorsport racing, much later motorsport racing. Since we're talking about BMW race cars, here's a Shuko branded uh, 2002 with a nice Jägermeister livery. It's a nice model, it's just that Shukos I think are a little overpriced uh, compared to some other brands like Inno or LCD, but I still like this model. And let's bring out those other two from the collection here, since I've reviewed them. We'll see them all on the same tabletop. The Z4 and the M3 GTR. So which is your favorite BMW? I could see a lot of people loving that M3. But for me, I think... Uh, the M1 is my, my favorite BMW of all time, uh, possibly because it was designed by Jajaro, one of the greatest car designers of all time. Alright. Well, it seems as though I lucked out three times this whole set, even though it's from 2012. They look brand new, even though they were, they were all opened. Uh, I really, I'm really happy to have this. Uh, so just go back and watch some of my other Kyoshos. shows. If you're new to collecting, uh, be prepared for paint rash. But when it doesn't happen, you know you're going to be very happy. So I would definitely still recommend you buy some Kyoshos. shows. I buy most of mine off eBay because they're all mostly out of print. And so sadly they're mostly expensive. Especially when you compare it to new brands, you know, new brands are going to have a lot more details. Uh, brake systems in particular would be the greatest differentiator, I think. But, uh, alright, so anyway, so that's for you new guys. Uh, alright, I appreciate you guys watching, and I'm sure sooner or later I'll get some more BMWs in. I'm not sure if they'll be Kyoshos, but I'll definitely get some more. Alright, thanks for checking this out.